we, when we started this idea, we wanted to, to highlight how minor league baseball is just so American in the aspect that it's such an easy and straightforward way to go see the stars of tomorrow, everyone getting the same opportunity, no matter how much you signed for or where you came from. Everyone gets the same opportunities, and everyone has the same struggle to go try to achieve success. And that's so uh, fluid with the idea of the, the American identity of being a self-made uh, man. And even more so than that, it's so easy, a cheap, and family fun way to go see the stars tomorrow and go see America's pastime and have fun and take the kids out there for cheap. <laughs> I think minor league baseball is American uh, because you get to come out here and watch America's pastime and the kids and the adults get to come out here and eat some hot dogs and drink some cold brewskis. You go ahead. Oh, my favorite ballpark snack is the uh, hamburgers. The hamburgers. Uh -huh, they right next door to me. But my favorite snack is the Fletcher's Corny Dog. We also sell funnel cakes and corny dogs. Okay. Well, it's America's game, obviously. And uh, anytime a player hits a dinger, uh, there's some fireworks. Uh, and there's a swimming hole out back for the little tykes to swim around in. And it's an overall USA event. Well, a baseball game is American because um, it entertains us and it also makes us feel like we're free to do anything. I had a friend was a big baseball player back in high school. He could throw that speedball by it, make you look like a fool boy. I like uh, minor league baseball better. Um, it's more fan friendly. It's um, geared towards uh, families, uh, younger kids. It's less expensive. Uh, games are you know, in a smaller stadium. It's easily accessible. Um, you know, you're a lot closer to the action. I think it's a lot more enjoyable and fun that way. The minor league games are cheap and fun and all, but on a professional level, it just doesn't compare to the uh, skill and talent that the major league guys have. I like minor league baseball more than major league baseball because it's a lot easier to get out here. It's a lot cheaper and it's not really a hassle and it's close to the house. Great thing about uh, minor league baseball, um, it gives these kids that uh, might not necessarily be ready to play in the big leagues, it gives them time to uh, uh, get better at their skill or at their position. Um, most of them are 18 years old, they don't hit the big leagues until they're about 22, 24 years old. So it gives them that time uh, to get better. Put me in cold, I'm ready to play today. Look at me, I can be Sandia. Well, what was, one, I like playing baseball. That was a dream. It's everyone's dream to go play pro baseball at some point. Now, the impact it had on me was, was it was, it was an eye-opener. Because when I went to college, I didn't get drafted out of there. I signed out of a camp. And so, you know, the excitement of just, hey, they paying for a plane ticket to fly to Billings, Montana. That's where I went out to. It was great. Get in the locker room, and I'm sitting there going, I'm sitting around guys. I came from Sam Houston State, went the junior college route, and I'm sitting around guys that have gotten paid like millions of dollars because they were drafted by the organization and they were 18 years old. I'm 23 years old at the time. And I'm looking at guys that played at Wichita State, at Texas, at California, and I'm sitting there going, these guys are all got big D1 scholarships or they were drafted out of high school. Who am I next to these guys? Once I got to talking to them, they're guys like everyone else. They struggle with the same things we struggle with. They just happen to have an opportunity that maybe I didn't have or maybe they were ahead of their game at that point. But being out there with them, you know, it's it, it comes down to competition, like in any sport. I don't have to be a big hitter like that guy was because I didn't hit. All I had to do was throw that ball over the plate and get them out. And that was, you know, that was the idea. I know in high school and college, that's all we talk about, get them out. But once you're there, the, they, what the organization wanted to see was not that, not that I could just get them out, but 
that I can throw it 90 plus miles an hour and that I can throw it by people and, and that they weren't touching the ball, which I realized at that point that wasn't the style that I am. I can throw it by some guys, some guys I couldn't throw it by. And they hit a pop up out to the wall. I'm going, all right, that's an out. And the coaches are going, yeah, that's a deep out though. Okay, what's the difference? An out's an out. But it is what it is, and like, we want guys that aren't going to hit it that far because in some parts that goes out. So I get that, but my age, I was 23, and I couldn't figure that out. I was like, an out's an out. It's not, it's not that the park is going to be short this day or that day. It didn't depend on the pitch I did. But uh, that was the first time going out and, and, and seeing the, the competition level. Wasn't much better, but it was impressive to be around guys that I knew got paid $2 million to sign the contract, and I got a plane ticket. Because I knew at that point, the political side of it, the kids that got paid big money, they were gonna last a little longer in the organization because no one's gonna pay out a ton of money and then cut a kid loose afterwards. It's not a good investment on their part. So I was fighting the I got a plane ticket. I got to go out and prove, prove, prove. And you know what? I, I did so the first year. And even the second year, my age kind of went against me at that point. I wasn't that 40 year old that could go out there. I was a 23, which is kind of old for the minor leagues at that level starting off. Well, I played, um, I played minor league baseball and I, I started in uh, 1987 and played in Elizabethton, Tennessee in rookie ball. That was, uh, in the uh, Appalachian League. And then in 1988, I played in the Midwest League in Kenosha, Wisconsin. In 1989, I played in uh, Orlando, Florida in the Southern League. That was double A. And then in 1990, I played in triple uh, A in the Pacific Coast League in Portland, Oregon. And then 1991, I played in triple uh, A in Portland, Oregon um, uh, again. And then in night, spring of 1992, I got hurt. Um, so I played parts of six seasons in minor league baseball. I think uh, minor league baseball is a great uh, uh, American, a unique American experience that can be very, very family friendly. You know, if you go to these minor league games, um, those are the stars of the future. Those, uh, you know, some of those guys on a guy or two or three on every team is going to be the next major league guy to come up for, for that in that organization or maybe some other organization, some other major league team. And so I think it's kind of neat to get to go see those guys before they actually make it to the big leagues. Um, and I think baseball, minor league baseball is unique in that they offer that experience um, that many other sports don't. Yes, the NFL, they don't really have the minor leagues. You know, college would really kind of be that. Um, Major League, uh, you know, the NHL, it's, it's, it's a different dynamic than baseball. The NBA, you know, has their D-League and all that stuff, but that's still different than, than Major League Baseball and the minor leagues. So I think it's minor league baseball is unique, and uh, the way that the minor leagues is set up today, um, it's a real inexpensive place to go take your family and enjoy a, a, a neat, wholesome experience. So in the beginning, we wanted to, you know, interview these big-time minor league players like Billy McKinney and a couple other guys who came through here. But we started to see that that was less the point we wanted to convey. We wanted to talk more about how it is minor league baseball is for the everyday American and for the, you know, every family to go out there and watch and be cheap and have fun and bond as a family over what really is America's pastime and a truly American idea. So down on the corner, the national pastime went on trial. We're talking baseball, Klazuski, Campanella, talking baseball. The man and Bobby Feller, the scooter, the barber, and the nuke. They knew them all from Boston to Dubuque. 